Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. In this week's video, I will study for and hopefully get my ABYC electrical certification. And if everything goes according to plan, then by the end of this video, Ava will be back on the boat. But before the young lady returns to the boat, hopefully I can show you why I'm excited about the ABYC electrical certification, what it's like participating in one of their courses, and also, well, hopefully what the exam is like and by that I mean, of course, hopefully pass the thing. If you're new here, we're Ava and Mess. I spent seven years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Trident Warrior sailboat named Athena. It was an oh glorious sanding extravaganza. We left Denmark and started cruising full time, sailing down Europe's west coast. And then we had our biggest adventure yet, crossing the Atlantic. Now we're sanding and sailing our way around the world. This video is going to be a little bit different than the videos you normally see on this channel because normally the videos are shot in the span of a week. That has to do with how I was shooting videos when I was doing the somewhat extensive refit of Athena because I was real time, I had to make a video every week. But the ABYC course is uh, three weeks long and I want to get all of it into this one video. So yeah, you might notice some slight continuity issues throughout this video. I hope that'll be okay. Let's start with the beginning. In case you're from outside of the US, you may not be familiar with the ABYC. It stands for American Boat and Yachting Council. They're a nonprofit organization that sets standards for the safe construction and maintenance of boats. This glorious pile of paper here is lovingly nicknamed the standard. It contains all the answers or at least a framework to help ensure that work that gets done on your boat gets done to a safe standard. There is so much information in this thing. But what exactly does that mean in the real world? Well, seeing as I'm doing the electrical certification, let's do a couple of examples from that. So let's say you've gotten a new electronic doohickey for your boat. The standard will tell you exactly what gauge of cable or wiring to use to power that doohickey. That's gonna be based on current rating, length of the run, the temperature wiring on the cable or the wiring, and also based on where on the boat it's actually run. Now that's a bunch of tables and there's a lot of jumping back and forth. And so it can get a little bit tricky to illustrate it. There's a much shorter and more concise example to illustrate what the standard does. These are ring terminals. They are used extensively for electrical connections on boats. Ring terminals usually attach to some kind of stud or if there's a screw or there's something to go through the hole there. Now let's say you're finished running the wiring for your new doohickey on your boat and you get to your bus bar and you notice that it's completely full all the other connections, there are one or two other ring terminals on them. So is it safe to add two or three ring terminals to the same stud? If we just randomly open the standard here, the answer shall reveal itself. No more than four terminals shall be secured to any one terminal stud. So provided you don't have anything else, that means you can't use that bus bar. Like for instance, maybe you're exceeding the current rating on it or something like that. There should be no issue connecting two, three, or even four ring terminals to the same stud. You might be thinking, but wait a minute, why not five? Five is a nice number. I like the number five. It's bigger than four, but smaller than six. I believe it has to do with heat generation, but that would be an excellent question for me to ask during my online course. This was just a quick example from the E part of the standard, the uh, E11 part to be specific, which has to do with AC and DC electrical systems. As a quick little illustration, this is the E11 standard. As you can see, it's only a tiny part of the entire standard. And if you flip a little bit further forward than E11, you get to E13, which has to do with lithium batteries on boats. The standard covers way more than just electrical stuff, and that is reflected in their certifications. Here are some of the study guides. There's a total of nine different certifications, I believe. I've got four of the study guides here. There's the marine electrical one, which is the one I'm gonna be starting on. Then we have a marine corrosion one, which I think I would be very interested in too. Then we have a marine systems certification. And then finally we have here the advanced marine electrical. The course I'm on, the marine electrical certification course is three weeks long. We meet three days each week for the three weeks. It's 100% online, it's over Zoom. So there's a Zoom presentation. It takes about an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. And uh, yeah, then after that, there is an exam. I think it's 204 questions. You have three and a half hours. It is open book and you need a passing score of 83%, I think. 
Because I couldn't help myself, I've already started polishing a red apple for the teacher, meaning I've already read through the uh, study guide here, and it's actually pretty good. It's a short read, it's concise, it's easy to understand, got lots of pictures and good examples. It is, yeah, it's a really, really good study guide. The next morning, a little before 9 a.m., I plumped down on the settee, ready to go back to school. There was the customary five minute delay due to some technical challenges, but then we were off to the races. Right. Yeah, perfect. I mean, we're, uh, thank you, Kristen. And uh, welcome everybody, uh, my name is Mike Tularia. I'll be your instructor for the next three weeks. Uh... The instructor on my course is named Mike. I can't speak for any of the other instructors, but Mike does a good job of explaining the data pack slides while interjecting real world examples and a little bit of humor. Having never done school online, it took me about an hour to realize that I could recline on the settee without anybody knowing. Thus the reclined and entertained, I very much enjoyed my first day of the course. After each lesson, there is an online test you can take. In this case, it had 13 questions. It seems like a great way to rehash some of the important topics from the day's chapter. I have successfully made it through the first week of the course. Now for my own completely selfish reasons, I think it would be really cool if there was a practical component to the certification also. But I mean, for what the certification is, meaning knowledge of the standard, of course it's not needed and you could argue that it's out of scope. But for my own selfish reasons, I think it would be really fun. But yeah, so far, awesome. Course. The person or team that put together the study guide really deserves a giant pat on the back. This thing is pretty awesome. It does a good job of cramming in knowledge and also I think, at least I hope, it does a good job of preparing you for the exam. If I was to wish for a single change to the course, it would be the addition of one or two practice exams, just so you could get an idea of what the exam is like. I feel like that would really help me prepare. There are those online questions I showed you and then after each chapter in the study guide, there are also some review questions but I feel like a real practice exam would be really nice. If you're wondering why I'm doing this certification and why I'm excited about the certification, well, it's actually quite simple. All it boils down to is I think it's an interesting topic. I'm having fun doing it. And also I love learning new stuff but I do also have a couple of practical applications. One of my goals for this summer is to bring Athena up to the ABYC standard. She's currently wired to the MADS standard, which was a little bit influenced by the fact that we were very pressed for time when we were leaving Denmark. Now, to be clear, there's nothing unsafe aboard Athena, nothing I wouldn't feel comfortable crossing an ocean with, but I do need to do a bit of work in the wiring management department and in the documentation department. And for instance, when we at some point want to sell Athena, it would be really nice to be able to provide the new owner with wiring diagrams. The biggest change I'll have to make in terms of wiring has to do with how the boat is grounded. In Europe, it is common to have what's known as a floating ground, but that is not allowed in the ABYC standard. And in fact, the study guide does mention that they were looking into making a standard for a floating ground, but um, I don't know if that will ever happen. And I think it makes a lot of sense if at some point we want to sell Athena in the US to have her be in compliance with the ABYC standard. I hope we can find a nice little quiet place to settle down somewhere on the East Coast this summer where I can make a series of videos going into a bunch of the practical aspects of AC and DC system support boats and uh, chuck that full of a bunch of examples. But uh, yeah, first I have to pass this certification. Over the next week and a half, I continue to enjoy the course. Recording in Welcome progress. Welcome to the last week. So we only have a couple more days here for the... Uh... On some of the slides, there were some underlined sections. Those are things that are likely to maybe, perhaps, potentially be in the exam. Every time something was underlined in the slide, I added it to a text document. The exam is open book and you're allowed to bring your notes. So I figured it couldn't hurt. One of the things I enjoyed was the recommendation of various tools, such as this shore test doohickey for checking AC installations. Before I knew it, it was the second to last day of the course and we were allowed to register for the exam, which is 100% online through a website called examroom.ai. 
As is so often the case, life gets in the way of oh glorious studying. Now Ava is returning to the boat later this week and in a couple of days I was planning on moving the boat closer to the airport. But a potentially super cool refit project has popped up in Florida. So I might just fly out to check out that boat before Ava gets back. And uh, today the winds are as light as they're gonna get so we better move the boat today. We'll leave this potentially new refit boat as a bit of a cliffhanger because it's still way too early to tell you guys anything. So yeah, just uh, forget I said anything about that. Yep, yep, yep. Just a regular day of the week. No big life changing scary decisions being made here. Just totally ordinary day. If memory serves, then the airport down by the Anchorage is kind of cramped. So uh, to minimize the risk of bumping anybody, let's just pull the solar panels in. Fingers crossed, this goes smoothly. As much as I have missed Ava over the last month and a half, which of course, by the way, is the maximum amount, it was a little bit fun to be able to do a bunch of anchoring on my own and just get used to doing all the things we normally do on the boat, but just only with one pair of hands. The airport on Totola is only a few minutes from the dinghy dock. It is rather small, but what it lacks in size, it makes up for with this ginormous fan and blazing fast internet, where I could attend the very last of the classes on the third day of the third week on my way to Florida. It is a few days later, both Ava and I are back on the boat. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Uh, <laughs> now, to prepare for the ABYC exam, I uh, put little uh, tabs in the uh, study guide. This is really impressive. You should do a close-up. Do a close-up. <gasps> <laughs> Aren't you happy to have me back? I'm very happy. Look at the precision of this. These aren't even like pre-made post-it tabs. These are little pieces of tape that Mads cut and made himself. Look at, look how beautiful that is. I'm so proud. There is a bit of method to my madness here. All the uh, yellow ones here are for specific things like topics I think I might need during the exam. For instance, if we flip to this page here, there is an example of a typical AC system. That way I can easily get to this and use it as a reference during the exam. The blue markings on the other hand are little sections of the standard that are included in the study guide that I think I might need during the exam. The examroom.ai website didn't really seem super in the mood for me to shoot video of the exam, so I don't have any footage of it, but it was 204 questions, you have three and a half hours, and the passing score is 83%. I am happy to announce that I did indeed pass the exam. I think my final score was 95.1%. I was hoping for a little bit higher, but my studying did get interrupted by that little trip to Florida. And also while I was in the US, I managed to pick up some kind of bug. So yeah, but that's not really important. I passed and I can use the results from the exam to figure out what areas I need to do a little bit more studying on. The ABYC is sending my official certificate to Ava's parents' address because that's the shipping address we use in the US. So yeah, I won't have that for a while, but I can call myself an ABYC certified marine electrical advisor. The ABYC has two different classifications of certifications. There are technicians and advisors. The two are very similar. The uh, theoretical knowledge is the same, so the study guide is the same, the course is the same, the exam is the same. The only difference between the two is that the technician must be able to demonstrate two years of work experience, I think. Who knows, if we end up finding a refit project in the US, maybe I can open up a little side hustle and do some marine electrical stuff on the side. I think that would be fun. But uh, yeah, speaking of fun, tomorrow we leave the BBIs and we head towards Puerto Rico. We weren't really planning on stopping in Puerto Rico. No, nope, no. Nope. But it just seems silly not to because uh, we're There's only... There's a Walmart there. Well, yes, we're only 90 miles from Costco. So <laughs> why, Costco. Yeah, why get provisions here when we can just have a quick pit yeah. stop on the way to the Bahamas and... I mean, why yeah. enjoy the beautiful scenery of the Caribbean when you can go to Walmart in Costco? I want cheap bacon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, on that high note of uh, capitalism, we will end this week's video here. 
We hope to see all you guys back here at Athena for our quick uh, little... Um, pit stop. Yeah, pit quick. stop in uh, Puerto Rico. We're only going to be there three or four days. It's, it's just to get a bit of diesel, get a bit of food on the boat before we hit the Bahamas. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of this week's video. Mm -hmm. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video... Please remember to leave a like. See, see you. you! See, this time, I didn't steal your line. You didn't, so I could say it when I needed to. Exactly. <laughs>